I work at Concentrix, which is a, a Concentrix is a custom and um, engagement business performance consulting, consulting firm in, in the US. And we're building a, an application for an employee uh, at a platform, uh, of course, using Drupal. Today, we're going to see the difference between progressively decoupled, fully decoupled, and headless. We're going to dive in into the Astro concept. We're going to have an introduction on the Drupal JSON API. And then we're going to see how we can build an application using Drupal and uh, Astro. Progressive decoupled is when you have your React component embedded within your um, Drupal team. <coughs> so you have Drupal, then you have JSON API providing content to the React component, or you can have also uh, through, uh, by variable on blocks, pass it through the, the React component, which are embedded in your template. Decoupled is when you have a separate application, could be Astro, or could be React, or Next.js, and then you have another application, Drupal, with the content management system, and then you have the JSON API providing content to the application. Decoupled is when, uh, sorry, headless is when you have the Drupal application, JSON API, and then providing content to the rest of the world. You don't, in this case, you don't care about the front end really, so in uh, decoupled, you build the uh, back end and front end together. In a head situation, you build the, the back end, and then anyone can use your content. It can be a, a, an AstroJS app, it can be an Alexa app, or anything else. Astro is a, one of the new, uh, newest uh, web, fra uh, web framework for content-driven website. It's specifically used for static application, and uh, its target is to ship, uh, to ship uh, zero JavaScript. So the less JavaScript is, is, it provides to the client, the better it is. He has these features, so it's an island, which is a web component based. Uh, it's UI agnostic, so you can use uh, any type of um, uh, front end, such as React, React, Svelte. It's server first, so the most expensive tasks are done into the, into the server on the build phase, and then it provides HTML. This leads up to the zero, uh, zero JS by default. And then it has a content collection where you can use the MDF file, MD file to build the application, and is customizable with Tailwind, and the X, and other integration. To install it, you need Node.js, text editor, and a terminal. You create the project using npm uh, Astro create the latest. You go through the installation process, so you decide a folder, uh, if you want to use a starter kit or not, if you, have, if you plan to use TypeScript, if you want, how do you want to use TypeScript, if you install dependency, and the internalize a new Git repo. Once it's completed, you can run npm run dev here, and then it starts the server at localhost the, uh, the, uh, port 4321. This is the default home page of Astro, and now we're going to dive in into the components so we can see how we can modify the page, we can modify the component, create new pages. This is the project structure. So we have the SRC folder where the components page study lives. We have the public folder folder when you, your non code lives. So for example, font, icons, or other type of styles. Then we have the package JSON, the Astro config, and then the TS config. Astro component is the building block of Astro. is uh, is built on the server side and ships to the uh, to the client only at HTML. You can write HTML in an Astro component, and uh, you can do it in the front matter. So any JavaScript that you type to write in the front matter will not be shipped to the client. During the build, the um, system will read JavaScript, translate it into HTML, and print it. It will be delivered just HTML to the client. You can pass props because Astro is based on React, so you can use the same way. So for example, you create a new component, the hello component, and you can use it as a React component. You can pass props, and it will, you can find it on the Astro global uh, props variable. And from here, you can call the other components. So you have the grid headlines, headlines just call another component, and in here, you can call it and pass the props. You can also add custom style to a component. So in this case, uh, this style is isolated just to this component. It won't be applied to any other component in the page or any other H2 tag that, which is, that is on the page if it's not within this component. If you want to use, if you use, use the same style across multiple components, you can set the style you can set the directive is global. And now this H2 style will be used across many other components. 
So for example, you can add a list of class and also you can, ask, you can add a logical application of the class. So in this case, uh, the constant is red and we are passing here a list of class and here we are defining which is red or not. So if the class is red is true, then it will, it will add the class red, otherwise it will not. You can of course create a CSS variable and pass it to the, to the style using the define vars directory and you can use it in your style. And this is still in, um, isolated within this component unless you pass the directive is global. But of course you can use any other framework such as Tailwind. So you can use the Astro uh, CLI to add Tailwind. So when you run npm Astro add Tailwind, it will automatically add Tailwind to your config. So under the integrations um, object, you can add and then it will create also the Tailwind configs with everything that is needed to build, uh, to pass the variables, to pass the classes to the, uh, to the Astro components. And now this loads Tailwind automatically on all the pages and components. And you can use directly the classes here without using any import or anything else. The same way as you add style, you can add JavaScript to the page. In this case, adding the script uh, tag here will actually run in the client. So anything that is in the front matter will never run in the client. So if you have uh, an alert in the front matter, it will not run in the client. If you have it in the, in the tag here, the task script here, it will run. We can pass variable using the defined parse uh, direct, uh, directive, and then here we can add our JavaScript. You can also add the import, you, import, uh, you can import local script. So you can, for example, have the script and then have your local script in your folder. It also works with TypeScript. <coughs> or you can add external, type, external uh, JavaScript files using the inline, is inline directive in this case. In this case, is how, uh, this is an example of how we're going to add a button that will alert the button was clicked. So we have the script, we have the query selector in JavaScript, and then this will run within the client side. So this will be shipped actually to the client. And you can use as any other React component. So this leads us to the island. Island are basically part of the application that are interactive with the, with the user. And in this case, you can add also React. Let's see how we can add React in the same way how we add, we add Tailwind, we can use the Astro CLI to add React. And this will add in, in the Astro config, we'll add the React um, integration. And now we can use it straight away. So we can create a JSX, uh, JSX component. So we can use the import state. Uh, we, can use the, we, can, we can create, we can export um, the component counter. And the, uh, having a simple counter here, you click. And then we can call it from another page or component, for example. So we import the counter in an Astro component, and then we can run it. And we can run it using a new directive. So directive client visible means that when the user sees actual, the actual component, so for example, if the component is in the footer, the user loads the page, the component is not visible yet, that means that the React component, the React JavaScript will not be loaded, or the JS file will not be loaded until the, the user scrolls down to the, to the page. There are other directives that, um, directive that can be used. For example, client load, this loads the JavaScript and the header the components on page load, on idle, on visible that we just saw, or we can define a root margin for visible, so it won't load it a little bit earlier than the, um, uh, when the user sees it, actually sees it. In Astro, you can create page. So if you are familiar um, uh, with, um, with Next.js, you can add any file uh, with this extension, Astro MD, MDX, HTML, and JS under the SRC page folder. And that automatically becomes a route because it has got a file-based routing. So each of the file becomes a route. So if we have a file under pages called about us, then it's reachable on your site slash about us. You can also create dynamic routes. We're going to see how. So this is the routing structure. So we have the SRC folder, the pages, and then the index in the index of your application, the home page of your application. About us could be the about us page. And then in this case, we, I have a recipe folder. And inside, I have an index. So in, under my site, recipe will show the, this, the index. 
or I have a, a, a list of recipe. Now, I don't need to create a page manually for each of the recipe that I'm gonna send to the, to the application. I can have a dynamic uh, parameter here. So the slug in this case for me will be the URL address. So in this case, Astro is the, the parameter that will match the content that will provide the right page. The same thing can be done, for example, with article. We have a page, which is another default, which is a default uh, parameter for, um, for Astro to do pagination. So if you have more than 10 articles, 20 articles, you can paginate it. And then in this case, I'm using an ID. In this case, it will be a number, the ID of the, of the article. And then we can use the spread operator if we don't know the exact uh, path, the full path of the, of the content. So let's create the first page. So this is the index page. So we can, again, we can add the font matter. We can create a constant with the page title. We can add the HTML tag, add and uh, the body. And then we can add the H1. We can do the same thing for about us, for example. So we have, again, the HTML tag, the head, and the body. But we could use the layouts. The layouts can uh, just incorporate many of, the, many of the layouts of the application. So you have, for example, in your main layout, <coughs> You have the HTML tag, the head tag, and the body. And inside, you have the slot component that will call everything that is within the layout. For example, in this case, I'm calling the layout, the layout from the index of the application. And then I open the component and pass in the props, and then the H1. And the H1 will be inserted inside the slot here. We can also do data patching. So in this case, I'm patching um, uh, a user um, the information from a user API. I'm getting the first result and then passing to the to the to the variable here in the in the page. And as I said, for dynamic routes, we have the parameter that we are passing within the brackets, and we need to use another function that makes it possible. So we need to use the get static path. Uh, function which is similar to the Next.js uh, function gets the path. So we get a list of, um, of content and just run through them and we start creating each page. So we need to pass the full list of content to the get static path and then we generate the HTML for all the pages. So for example, in this case, I have the uh, this Astro page with the ID, with, where the ID should be, uh, for example, cliff, ro cliff, rover, or spot. So if you reach the site on slash cliff, slash rover, or slash spot, it will call one of these pages and will pass the props. In this case, I have the title. So if I go to uh, my site slash cliff, I'm going to see here your ID is cliff and your title is cliff. A little bit more complex, we can go as an example. So in this case, I have a, a list of recipe that I'm getting from the res get recipe function. I'm going through each recipe. I'm using the params uh, uh, alias, and then I'm passing as a props the full content of the recipe. Then I'm getting the props <coughs> from the Astro uh, global variable. I'm guessing, sorry, I'm getting recipe from the Astro global variable, and then I'm passing to the body of the, of the page. To use it with Drupal, uh, we can use REST API or JSON API. For my example, I use JSON API because JSON API is what we should use if you wanna just deliver content, because it's most, it's most powerful. REST, I usually use it when I want to do uh, some, uh, some um, uh, custom endpoint, or for example, I want to use the login and the creation of the user. JSON API has the HTTP method, so you get get, post, patch, and delete and follows the URL structure. So you have the JSON API that you can change if you install the JSON API, API extra module, then you need to specify the entity type ID and then the bundle ID. So if you wanna get a list of articles, you need to do JSON API, node, and article. And this will give you a full list of article up to 50. Then you have, for example, you wanna call a specific article, so you have, again, the entity type ID, the bundle ID, and the entity UUID. So in this case, it's node, article, and UAD. For patch and delete, you just call the entity itself, the, the entity directly. 
this is the basic response of JSON API. So you have the, the, um, the payload, you have the, da the data inside that, you have the type and the ID. Inside the attribute, you have, you have the, all the node information, such as node, title, created, changed, promoted, status, and, uh, and uh, all the other fields. If a field is a reference to another entity, then it goes into the relationship object. That looks like this. So we have, again, the type, the ID, and the attribute, which I, I minimize now. And then we have the relationship. This, for example, is the author of the article. And it gives you just the type and the UID. Same thing, for example, with the taxonomy tags, for example. So we have, again, the attribute of data, then the type, and the UID. With JSON API, you can retrieve just certain filter, because maybe you don't want the whole payload. So in this case, we can use the field query string, where you specify the entity type, and then the field list. So for example, I want to have a list of articles, and from the list of articles, I want just title or created, or for example, for a certain article, I want the title, created, and body fields. And the response will be much simpler. So you have, the, again, the data, the type, the ID, and inside the attribute, you have the title, created, and the body. You can also do filtering if you require a certain, uh, certain articles. So for example, here, filtering by title and by status. You can mix match with the, with the fields, so you can have uh, all the uh, articles uh, with the title is testing JSON API, and I want just the field title. The, the previous uh, example here are doing just the equal operation for filtering, but there are many other filtering options here and can be used in a different way. So if you want to specify a new filtering option, you can have uh, the filter query parameter, then you have the filter name, the condition, and then the path will be your field. Then you have the operator, which is the, one, the operator you want to use, and the value of the field. If you want to, for example, uh, do it for, you want to filter by many values, you can use the array of values. So you have the path with the field name, the operator, which it will be in, and then each value will go into an array. You can do the sorting as well. The default sorting is ascending, so you add the sort query string and then the field. So you're creating ascending um, uh, the articles here. If you want to do the descending order, you can add a minus in front of the field. And this will convert it to ascend, to descending. You can do the pagination, because uh, JSON API provides only 50 content to avoid the DOS attack. So you can do the pagination. So you can create, in this case, uh, at the page limit of 10, and the response will contain the leads. So you contain all the data, that all the article that uh, you ask, so 10 per time, but also the links to the new pages to do the new query. So the, the, the current one itself, so we are, on, we are on, the, on the second page with the limit of three. Then you have the next one, so you can click on this link, you can uh, go to this link and get the next batch of article or the previous one. Of course, if there is no next, it means that is the last page. If there is no previous, it means, it means that is the, the first page. The most important, I think, is the include. The include also loads the relationship data. So we, we saw that the, when uh, we want to call the user data, it just provides the UID of the, of the user. But if we include the UID, it will provide the full object again. So if we try to do the include UID, we'll get the response. And in other object, we'll have to include with the type, the ID, the attribute with all the fields of the user. We can also filter, of course, in a, another example, for example, for tags. So I'm calling the, all the articles and getting the field title of the articles. I want to include the tags, but from the tags, I just want the title. So again, I do the field, query string, I do the taxonomy term tags, and then I, um, and then I pass the field name in this case. So I have, I have again the data, the, da the data with the title of the article, and then in the include, I will have also just the attributes. There are other Drupal modules that helps you on uh, with JSON API. So we have the sub request because when you do a post request, you can do just one per time. So if you want to create, for example, an article and a tag at the same time. You need to do into your sub request. So you send a payload with two requests, so two objects, one for tags and one for uh, uh, for the articles, and then you can reference in the article object the response of the first request. Simple auth is for authentication, 
menu items is to retrieve better better way to retrieve menu items. Image styles provides you the image style for the image that you are that you are calling. Includes helps you a little bit on the output of the include instead of putting another in a separate object. It was includes it in uh, uh, within the field in the in the attributes and views expose the views and there are many more that uh, you can use as well. Now we're going to see how we can uh, integrate it with uh, with Ru Astro with Drupal. I built a Umami demo, so I use uh, Umami demo from Drupal, and I built a, 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 a an Astro application that is contacting Drupal, getting all the content from Umami, uh, uh, including the blog, including the blogs in the taxonometer, and then showing the um, the content. Quick demonstration it's here. Page of the application, so I have the, the banner, list of recipe and articles. Here, yeah, this all Astro done with Astro and Drupal on the back end. So I have a list of articles here, I have a list of recipe, and inside each recipe, I have all the information here as well. show you how I did it. So first of all I installed JSON API params on my Astro application. So I installed the, the, the Drupal JSON API params which adds you on building the, the query string that you are gonna send to Drupal. So this is what we're showing the I showed in the in the example. So I have the JSON API node articles and then I need to specify the fields and the filter. But you can use JSON API params to do something like this. So we create a new object, we can start adding the fields, we specify the bundle ID, and then we provide an array list of titles. And then also we can add the filter. And this return what we saw before. And then we can use it, for example, like this. We can use it, uh, it comes handy when you need to create more complicated queries. So for example, like this, we need to add the fields from the node article, then we need to include the media, then we need to call other fields from the media and the file the URI, and then we need to filter by status of the of the node, and then we need to add a sort. And this helps us building the query string. Another package that I've used is JSONA. JSONA helps you formatting the response from Drupal. It removes all the unnecessary nesting and uh, add the includes under the field object. It's similar to what the Drupal module is doing, but because here I'm using just Drupal, which is an API installed and nothing else, and do everything on the AstroJS side. So I installed the JSON AA on the Astro uh, application. And this was the response before I used JSON AA. So I have the data, the attribute to all the fields, the relationships, and then inside, uh, under uh, outside of the, of the attributes, I have the includes on each field. So if, for example, I have a list of, ta a list of includes, like many, sorry, I have many uh, relationships like for example user tags and images for example I need to go through the list of include check the type and then check if the UAD matches uh, the one that I want to call but I can use JSONA so I create a new JSONA object I pass the serialize I, I call the serialize function and then this is what it returns so it returns the title and uh, then we have the UID, which is the user, and inside the UID we have the type, the ID, and all the user information. So this helps us on getting the data and then ship it to the client then. And then here we have the relationship's name, which is an array of fields that are, uh, were included in the relationship. For example, if you want to create the, um, uh, the, the, the recipe page, course is going to be a dynamic uh, route because we don't know the, um, the, uh, the URL of, the, of each of them. And we start creating um, the file under SRC, pages, recipe. We name it recipe.astro. Uh, the recipe will be our, param, our uh, parameter and will be the URL analysis. We're going to use the get static path. Uh, so we get all the collection of the recipe and then we map it and then we pass it to, uh, to the front end. 
I will do it using the get recipe function that I wrote for this demo. So this demo, I'm having I'm just doing the, uh, the getting the query string. So I did just Drupal JSON API params, adding all the fields that I need from the recipe um, content type. Then I'd include such as media, category, and tags. And then I add each field from the image, from the uh, from the category, and from the tags. And then I filter by status. Status. I convert into a query string, and then I use the fetch URL, which is another function that I wrote for this purpose. And I pass the URL. And the fetch function is doing a, a, a fetch uh, doing a fetch function to the URL. And then I'm using the JSON A to deserialize it and have a better response to format. And then in my recipe page, I call the get static path. I wait for the get recipe, and then for each of them, I just uh, just map the uh, the params so to match the URL, and then pass the recipe object. And here there is the all the, all the fields that I needed for the front end. This is the uh, recipe listing page. Listing, uh, uh, listing page. So again, we're going to create a route. In this case, will be page. We're going to use pagination, even if in the example there are no pagination. And uh, we use again the get static path, and we use the same function, which is uh, get um, get recipe, because it's going to uh, return the collection recipe. And here, I'm going to have the uh, the way to get the recipe. Then I add the page size of ten, so each page should have ten items, and then I pass the props to the page. In, in this case, I'm going to map it all the, the response with the recipe, and then I'm going to have the pagination down here. This is the homepage banner. So this is a block that leaves <coughs> the UMI demo. So I have an image, and then I have the button here, text, and the title. And again, we're going to create, in this case, a component. It will be the homepage banner uh, Astro component. And I called a created a function get homepage bundler to retrieve the homepage bundler of the Drupal blo block. This is my uh, is the function to get the bundler block. So we have this type. Uh, this time the type will be a block content, and then they will be a bundler block. I have the fields. I include the image, and then I pass the URI, and then I filter by info by passing the name of the block, and the limit by one. And then in my component. I, I call the get homepage banner. I, I construct the URL of the image, and then I build the component here. This is, is a collection of recipe. So it's a collection of 16 uh, tags from um, uh, from the recipe. And again, so we have the new component under SRC component called recipe collection. In the front matter, I call the function get recipe, co the, uh, recipe collection, and then that is going to get give me all the recipe tax taxonomy term. So this is the get recipe collection. So we had the Drupal JSON API params. Then I add the field, and then the query string, and then I fetch the URL. And this is then the component. These are all the resources where you can find all the information. So this one is the Drupal JSON API module with all the concept, filtering, paging, uh, how to do a get post request. Then we have the, the Astro uh, website where you can get all the information, how to build a blog, the components, the pages, how to migrate from another application, all the guides for routing, scripting, endpoint, fetching. This is the link for the UMAMI demo. This is the link for the module Drupal JSON API params and JSON A. And here there is another list of content of modules that you can use uh, with for Drupal. So you have, for example, the Commerce API, the JSON API Boost, uh, filtering extras, flag, uh, included to show you the menu. The resources. Then there was one that I want to show. You.
the sub request module for Drupal so if you want to create one on uh, more resources at the same time so what I was saying there is one uh, one payload here so you have the first request here which is creating a tag and in the second request you can use the wait for um, object uh, object here with waiting for the request one and then you can reference here the first request so in this case, it's using the data ID of the uh, of the taxonomy terms that has been created and is adding to the relationship. Okay. Let's see. Any question? Between Astro and okay. uh, Astro <coughs> tends to, as I said, tends to ship uh, zero JS. I never work with Svelte at the moment, so I just work with Next.js and uh, and Astro. So as I said, it ships zero JS. So you will just get HTML, and we load the JS file only when you want to. So it's, it's the difference. So it's, uh, it will be faster and easier to cache, and we'll just unload all the um, all the loading from the from the client side. Gotcha. 